Cutting edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. Time for teen science students at Seizures Free School near Aarhus in Denmark to get up close to their subject and get their hands dirty. Today it's an ecology field trip on wastewater and its treatment. The experiments take place in Freeland, a community some eight kilometers from the school. Here every household has to treat its own wastewater. Carlos Arias is a Colombian research assistant at the University of Aarhus. He's come along to explain to the children the differences between the several classes of wastewater and how important it is to treat them all. Kids learn a lot about wastewater here. They can see it, they can smell it. They realize that it's important for the wastewater to be treated before it's thrown back into the environment so that it's not harmful. With these practical lessons, we try to make them more aware. We try to make them understand that polluted water can be very harmful to nature, but also that, well treated, it can become a natural resource. Wastewater is cleaned here with the help of these willows. The roots filter many of the polluting particles in suspension. Students measure the level of underground wastewater and its effect on the tree's growth. Partially cleaned wastewater ends in this pond, where the rainwater, natural sediments and plants clean it more. Students measure the water's pH and then, with the help of small colour, matches water's great enemies, nitrates, phosphates and ammonia. I knew that water could be cleaned, but I thought that cleaning was done with machines, not plants. Cleaning wastewater is an important thing to do to preserve the environment and also the atmosphere. The school is taking part in a European research project aimed at helping children to learn natural sciences with the help of wastewater. Hands-on experimentation is a plus for learning sciences, say both Carlos Arias, the project coordinator in Denmark, and Gert Bilander, the school's science teacher. I think it's important that children learn about wastewater because uh, they need to have the understanding that nothing just disappear. That uh, in the, in the modern society, you don't actually see what happened uh, with our garbage and with our wastewater and so on. You just throw out in the toilet and it's gone. But it's not, it's not gone. Playing with ice and snow comes naturally to all children of the North. Indoors in the warm, water becomes a learning tool at this state school in Allensboro, some 500 kilometers north of Sweden's capital, Stockholm. Here it's the teen students on the front line teaching seven-year-olds how scarce fresh water is on earth compared to salt water. They explain to them that polluted fresh water must be cleaned to ensure a good quality of drinking water around the world. Far from just being something easily on tap, it's precious and hard-earned. Unlike the applause for the novice teachers, it seems the message is getting across. Cleaning water is important so you don't get sick and you don't destroy the environment around you. We don't have much fresh water that's clean. I think it's important to know different ways of cleaning water. The seven-year-olds also get to experiment. They're running a recycling model. Used dirty water coming from the aquarium below is pumped up into a small vegetable garden. Natural chemical processes in the plants and soil clean the water, which is later fed back into the aquarium. Children are encouraged to measure temperature and conduct experiments on samples. They learn that cleaning wastewater is a simple process with added environmental benefits. They wanted to know how our fresh water was cleaned. I mean here in our city. So we have to work with that now uh, because they just understood that it's the same water we have all the time. And we need to clean it and we also discussed what should we do with dangerous things like medicine or oil or so? Can we put it 
in the toilet or in in the forest or so, or do we do, do we have to do something else with it? Back in the classroom, the pupils colour drawings of fish similar to the ones they can see in the aquarium. Time to think about what they've just been taught and see if they've understood the basics. Fishes go to toilet in the water. Well, thank you for that, Rasmus. We'll let the girls continue. And then this dirty water is sent to the flowers. The flowers clean it and the water is returned to the tank, where the fishes can feed from it again. Nils Ekeland, professor at the University of Mid-Sweden, is the project's national coordinator. Its achievements have been detailed in this notebook, written by the children themselves. You can do simple, we say simple experiments, but even you can learn a lot by talking around the experiments. Even if it looks very simple when you do the experiment, it's a lot of, a lot of important knowledge in, in the experiments. And as we know now, younger people that are not so interested in natural science, they like to do art, movies, journalistic and so. But if you can really start from the beginning to get them involved and do easy experiments, I think we can increase the amount of young people coming into these natural sciences. Back in Denmark, it's time for the Sujo's free school children to return to their classroom. They use rudimentary chemical tools to analyze their water samples and measure the nitrate levels. It's chemistry, biology and environmental science, all wrapped into one. We mustn't use clean water to irrigate plants and vegetables. We can use wastewater for this and also for other things if we clean it. If we don't clean wastewater, we have all sorts of bacteria around. If you water your garden with this untreated water, you'll have all these bacteria. Same thing if you use dirty water to bathe. Bacteria everywhere, and it can be really disgusting. Scientific culture is born out of curiosity. I think that also the kids' scientific consciousness is born out of curiosity. And to awaken this consciousness, kids need to experiment and be in close contact with processes linked to nature. Some of these processes are really easy to understand. This project aims at creating an environmental consciousness at helping children to understand the importance of preserving our nature. But its primary goal is to promote scientific curiosity and start training tomorrow's European scientists early.